Jack Starr's Burning Star was formed in New York City around 1984, after guitarist Jack Starr split up with his first band, Virgin Steel. After two albums with Virgin Steel and a 1982 audition for KISS, creative differences with Virgin Steel vocalist David DeFay would lead Jack to shift his focus to his first solo album, Out of the Darkness. Out of the Darkness also features two-thirds of the Rods, drummer Carl Kennedy and bassist Gary Bordenero. And for vocals, Jack would tap Rhett Forrester, fresh off recording two albums with Riot. Rhett and I are very different people, and we had to learn to trust each other. I remember one day playing Concrete Warrior on the phone to Rhett, and when I finished playing it, he said, Jack, you must have wrote that song for me, because I am a Concrete Warrior, and when I walk in the streets of New York City, I fear nobody. I thought it was great he was making the songs come alive, and I even wrote Wild in the Streets for Rhett, because it was crazy hanging out with him. Overall, Out of the Darkness is great, and easily more consistent than the two Virgin Steel albums Jack had appeared on. Even though there's still a nice variety of styles on here, including some straight up power metal, like my favorite off the album, Chains of Love. But while the majority is pretty heavy, straightforward rock, there's also a solid ballad, two very different instrumental tracks, and even a touch of early rainbow in False Messiah. Plus, the solos are stellar throughout the album. With Out of the Darkness well received both domestically and overseas, Jack would start to get more recognition for his playing, even gracing the cover of the early 1985 edition of Metal Forces magazine. The Out of the Darkness album has sold around 60,000 copies now. In the States, I'm signed to Passport, and they've been doing a great job, as have Music for Nations in Europe. But rather than stay in solo mode, Jack would record his next album under the name Jack Star's Burning Star that same year. This album would feature Jack on guitar, Frank Vestry on vocals, Bruno Ravel on bass before forming Danger Danger, and drummer Greg D'Angelo between Anthrax and White Lion. However, the live lineup featured on the back of the album included bassist John Rodriguez and drummer Tony Galtieri, along with Jack and Frank. 
we called it Rock the American Way because as opposed to the album that came out before, which was Out of the Darkness, this definitely had a more of an American metal feel to it. Rock the American Way is definitely a lot more radio friendly than Out of the Darkness and leaves out the more classical and blues influences found on other Jack Star albums. But the poppier stuff here still works with some catchy hooks and melodies. But the heavier side of the band is still represented with tracks like Live Fast, Rock Hard, and Fight the Thunder. And there's still plenty of slick riffing and imaginative guitar work to tie it all together. Again, Rock the American Way is fairly light for the most part, but it's still a lot of fun and a very easy album to listen to. But by the following year, Frank Vestry had been replaced with vocalist Mike Torelli, whose voice was a bit better suited for epic metal. I found Mike when I walked into a club on Long Island and heard him sing Heaven and Hell by Black Sabbath. I had to meet him, so after the set, I walked up and introduced myself, and he said, I know who you are, Jack. I'm a big fan of Virgin Steel, and I love your singer, David DeFay. I told him thank you, but that I was no longer in Virgin Steel and I needed a singer. Mike looked at me and said, I don't know if I'm ready to be compared to someone like Dave. I told him I thought he was great and that he had his own style. Plus, if he could sing like Dio, he could do anything he wanted. Mike and Jack would also be joined by drummer Mark Edwards and former Sabotage bassist Keith Thumper Collins, as well as Jack's old Virgin Steel bandmate David DeFay on keyboards to record Burning Star's second album, No Turning Back. <laughs> No Turning Back is way heavier, with powerful riffs and melodies that take full advantage of Mike Torelli's massive pipes. While Rock the American Way went in more of a glammy direction, No Turning Back feels far more like what you might expect based on the Virgin Steel records, mixed with a Dio style metal energy. This album did very, very well for us, and uh, it was really one of the first albums to play this kind of metal that later on actually got a name, and they started calling that type of metal epic metal, power metal. Pretty much every track on here rocks, with furiously headbanging cuts like Path of Destruction, Road Warrior, and Call of the Wild.
Plus, the solos are fantastic, with many of them adding in more of that neoclassical touch missing from the previous album. get a burning star music video off the album for the cover of James Taylor's Fire and Rain, which opens with a lady writing a letter to someone. Yesterday morning, let me know you were gone. Suzanne, the plans that made put an end to you. I walked out this She stands in front of her favorite Burning Star poster for moral support, then places the letter on the piano and gets the hell out of there. It's a solid track as far as covers go, and a nice metal arrangement of a classic song. Keyboards show up only a couple times on the album, including in the beautiful guitar and piano instrumental closer, Coda. The following year would see another member shakeup, with Jack and Mike being joined by William Bass Fairchild on bass, Jim Harris on drums, and Edward Spahn on keyboards. This lineup would record Burning Star's third album, Blaze of Glory. For some reason, the German label they were now signed to, the somewhat confusingly named U.S. Metal Records, wanted the album released as simply Jack Star, although it is a Burning Star album. This would be corrected on later reissues. Blaze of Glory pushes that American power metal feel even further, with Mike's expansive range, Jack's heavy riffs, and a tight rhythm section. Stand up. This album, very heavy album, uh, it, it's really No Turning Back Part 2. Mike Torelli sang incredibly. I was really uh, proud of the way it came out, and um, every song on here is really pretty darn good. I was thinking, well, you know, every cool band has one song named after their band. You know, Iron Maiden had a song. Of course, Black Sabbath had a song called Black Sabbath. And I said, you know what? I'm going to write a song called Burning Star.
And if Mike initially had any concerns about handling Virgin Steel songs, he more than holds his own on Go Down Fighting, which had originally appeared on a Virgin Steel EP. Excellent title track got a music video, mostly made up of more concert footage, mixed with snippets from war documentaries. It's a pretty simple video overall, but the song is great, including a fantastic solo. The same lineup would also put out Burning Star's self-titled fourth album in 1989, which is also known as the Orange Album. We didn't really have a name for this album, which was kind of funny, weird in a way. So we started referring to it as the Orange Album. Send me an angel, send me an angel. I'm a big fan of this one, which takes the power metal sounds from the previous albums and adds some poppier melodies. There's definitely more of a commercial flavor here than on the last couple albums, with more prominent keyboards and glammy, catchy choruses. But it all comes together really well, and the power is still there. Plus, this one got two music videos, including New York Woman. As usual, the video has some performance footage, but this one also includes shots of several women trying and mostly succeeding to look sexy. Let's go out on the town today to see what we can find. It's a groovier track that's less poppy than most of the album, with a bit more of an out of the darkness feel to me. The second song to get a video was Tear Down the Wall. is entirely performance footage with no clips of hot women blowing bubblegum on their face, but the song is incredibly catchy and more closely represents the tone of the album. The 
Following the Orange album, Burning Star would break up, partially due to Bass's growing drug abuse, which made it impossible for him to continue playing and would eventually lead to an overdose a few years later. In 1990, Jack would record a second solo album titled A Minor Disturbance. A Minor Disturbance is entirely instrumental and features Randy Coven on bass, John O'Reilly on drums, and Felix Hanneman on keyboards. It's pretty laid back compared to Jack Starr's previous material, but it's an easy listen and showcases a few different sides of Jack's playing, with a mix of funk, blues, and rock guitar. Following year, however, Jack would get back together with Mike Torelli, along with bassist Jerry Rosselli and drummer Steve Rosen, to record an album under the name Strider. In 1991, Mike and I recorded an album called Strider. We did not call this one Burning Star because the band had already broken up, and only Mike and I were featured on it. But it had some great songs on it, including the last complete Burning Star song called Under the Influence. Recently re-released as Burning Star 5, The Strider Project, this is another solid album overall, although it pulls way back on the poppier aspects of the Orange album and leans into a bluesier hard rock direction. We wanted to do something a little bit different, uh, and so this is a little bit more American-based. It's not really a total metal album, but it's definitely hard rock, and uh, it's got some ripping guitar and killer vocals. And while it's mostly very bluesy, there's still a heaviness to the album, along with some excellent guitar work, including the solo from Prove Your Love. The rest of the 90s were pretty quiet for the most part, although a collaboration with David DeFay was attempted in 1997, known as the Reunion of Steel demos. And in 2000, Jack would release a third solo album, Soon Day Will Come, which blends blues rock with a Latin flair. But he would eventually come back to heavy metal, recruiting Joe Hasselvander on drums, his longtime friend Ned Maloney on bass, who had actually appeared on a track way back on Out of the Darkness, and Shmalik Avagal on vocals to record Under a Savage Sky as Guardians of the Flame in 2003. This one has also since been re-released as Burning Star 6, Under a Savage Sky, and is a powerful return to melodic heavy metal. All right, look to the Shmali 
Zeke is a solid singer, with more of a gruffness to his voice than Mike, although I'd say Mike's style is probably a better fit for the music overall. And the solos are outstanding as always, with classical touches thrown in to enhance the epicness. This album really marked the beginning of the rebirth of Burning Star. Uh, I moved to Florida and I hooked up with my old bass player, Ned Maloney, and uh, the rest is history. Overall, it doesn't quite reach the level of other Burning Star albums for me personally, but there are still some powerful, energetic tracks on here I really like, including the awesome six-minute instrumental, Anthem for the Nations. Jack would eventually start work on a second Guardians of the Flame album, and after releasing another blues-based album in 2008, he'd also get signed to Magic Circle Music, owned by Joey DeMaio of Manowar. On Joey's suggestion, Jack would decide to bring back the name Burning Star for the next record, to build on the established fan base of the band's strong 80s albums. And so, along with Ned Maloney, Jack would be joined by drummer Rhino and new vocalist Todd Michael Hall to record Burning Star's first album in 20 years, Defiance. <music> Defiance was produced by Joey DeMaio, and if you're a big Man of War fan like I am, it's impossible to not hear his influence. Look in his eyes, for he not alive he will not answer as you plead for your life you may possess wealth you may possess fame but in the end there's a prize to be paid but while the man of war vibe is very apparent it also doesn't overshadow the sound of the band so defiance ends up being a really interesting mix of the two it's the day of the reaper, it's the end of your life. It's the day of the reaper, face alive. Even with the very Man of War production, Jack and Ned's songwriting give Defiance its own character on top of it. And Todd Michael Hall's effortlessly powerful voice is an excellent fit for the music, easily handling the more epic power metal material. There is a bit of a mix within the album with some old school hard rock thrown in, a touch of speed metal, and the nine minute epic Black Clouds of Thanos. From the Black Clouds of Thanos, there is no escape. Black Clouds of Thanos, the death roll away. Black Clouds of Thanos, seeds flashing by. Black Clouds of Thanos, it's your Overall, it's a solid entry with multiple tracks that I like, 
but Defiance really feels like it's laying the groundwork for the band's following album, Land of the Dead. Land of the Dead feels a bit more focused than Defiance, with a clear power metal direction packed with heavy riffs and uplifting melodies. Sail on, sail to the night. Your time has finally come to reach for the stars, reach for the sun. Dream on, dream of a better life. Land of the Dead is about what happens when people start becoming dead mentally, spiritually, and creatively when they're actually still alive. It's traditional metal, it's, it's epic sounding, it's, it's huge. I think that uh, I wanted to um, go back to the sound of No Turning Back and Blaze of Glory and Out of the Darkness. Keep your dreams alive, send a message to the world, don't believe in dirty Land of the Dead does match the energy and quality of those earlier albums, but with more of a modern sound. All that matters, we'll burn in our minds. Everything passes through the sands of time. All the gold will cease to shine. Everything must pass through the sands of time. Plus, the solos somehow continue to get even better here with awesome guitar passages from Jack. The video for Sands of Time was filmed at Keep It True 2013, and features Crystal Viper vocalist and guitarist Marta Gabriel, who had also played keyboards on Land of the Dead. There's a little more Latin-style blues here in Daughter of Darkness and an excellent instrumental track, Twilight of the Gods, but the majority of the album is high-energy power metal. Jack would also release another blues album in 2011, Swimming in Dirty Water. But as far as Burning Star goes, this lineup seems to work really well together, with everyone contributing ideas. And that collaborative process would continue for their next project. We have all the music written for the new album. Ned and I have written most of the songs, but we will also be doing songs written by Rhino and Todd Michael Hall, our singer. Along with another epic cover by Ken Kelly, known for Man of War album covers as well as the Kiss albums Destroyer and Love Gun, Stand Your Ground is a continuation of the sound built on Land of the Dead. I know every band believes that the new album will be great, but this album will be very special because some of the riffs and ideas have existed for 30 years. In particular, I have one song that was written by Ned Maloney, Rhett Forrester, and myself for Out of the Darkness called Stronger Than Steel, and we're happy it will be finally released. Stronger than steel. It's a super consistent power metal album, and overall, Stand Your Ground may possibly be even a little better than Land of the Dead, with outstanding tracks like one of my favorites, Destiny. There'd 
also be one video from the album for the track Hero. The whole album is great with powerful epic tracks, but Hero is another standout for me with heavy bass, pummeling drums, and soaring vocals. But again, it's just one example from Stand Your Ground of an awesome song with speedy, melodic songwriting and a phenomenal guitar solo. In 2013, Todd had taken over on lead vocals for the band Riot, and that role was beginning to take up the majority of his time. So by 2018, Todd would decide to devote his full attention to Riot, and in 2019, Jack would recruit 19-year-old Italian vocalist Alex Panza to fill the mighty shoes of singers like Todd Michael Hall, Mike Torelli, and Rhett Forrester. As uh, many of you are aware of, Todd Michael Hall is no longer singing with Burning Star. And we found the right guy, Alex Panza, who really is just a phenomenal singer. He's got a real unique tone and he's got the range and a lot of personality to his voice. Oh yeah. <laughs> In 2022, this lineup would release Burning Star's most recent album, Souls of the Innocent. It's quite a powerful little album. It's not the double epic thing we did the last time, but it's chock full of great songs, great riffs, and great melodies like you know, we've become accustomed to. Producing. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> We're really going for a slightly more stripped down sound, maybe a little bit heavier in some in some respects. Stripped Down and Heavy is a pretty good description of the album, especially in regard to the title track with its groovy, chuggy riff. The second single, Demons Behind Me, is more up-tempo, but stays in a classic power metal vein with a more aggressive vibe. It's really the first song of the album, but we you know, have a great intro before it. We were looking for a fast song to start with, which we always do. We were just trying to concentrate on a certain feel, a very up-tempo feel, and Jack came up with a great riff off the cuff, and uh, that's when it came together, just kind of spontaneously. Oddly, 
there are some clips from a mega low budget movie shoehorned in here that add nothing but confusion. But with guitar solos this good, it's hard to be too bothered by it. There was also a video for I Am The Sinner, another heavy mid-tempo track with a Dio-inspired riff. I walk the streets of the city at night Down in the sidewalk, hiding from the light I'm trying to break the chains of yesterday This one also features even more low-budget movie clips, seemingly selected at random and peppered throughout the song. But it's a pretty small complaint since the track itself is a nice mix of emotions with a softer, near-ballad chorus. This was really a, a really great group effort. We were doing some heavy rehearsing and we worked out all the kinks in the song and we made it cohesive, we made it tight, and we made it menacing. Overall, it's a terrific album with heavy, catchy songwriting, and I think Alex will get even better with age. But the skillful solos are already killer, of course, and are a highlight here as well. And that is Burning Star, headed up of course by Jack Star, with a ton of extremely catchy and heavy albums you should definitely check out. Out of the Darkness from 1984 is awesome, and Rock the American Way from 1985 is very poppy and not really in the style of later albums, but I still enjoy it and would highly recommend it. No Turning Back from 1986, Blaze of Glory from 1987, and the Orange Album from 1989 are all excellent in a solid trio of 80s power metal albums. I went back and forth on Defiance from 2009 because I do like it a lot, but I also think the following albums are quite a bit better overall. But I'd say Defiance, Land of the Dead from 2011, Stand Your Ground from 2017, and Souls of the Innocent from 2022 are all outstanding power metal albums and well worth checking out. For extra credit, Strider from 1991 is a cool bluesy rock album with kind of a different side of Mike Torelli. And Guardians of the Flame from 2003 has some great stuff on it as well. And the tracks I liked, I really liked. I hope you enjoyed this look back at Jack Starr's Burning Star, a band that's been a bit overlooked yet has been releasing consistently high quality metal albums since the mid 80s. As always, thanks for watching and see you next time. You guys rule, thank you.